Hey, I'm Coach Brian with CriticalBench.com. Thanks for tuning in. I appreciate you taking time out of your busy day to watch this video on the psoas. Now, as I'm s sitting here, um, you're probably sitting uh, uh, watching this video as well, but I want you to get up. There's a reason why I want you to stand. Is because since we're talking about the psoas, it's important to know that the psoas is abused and mistreated because of things like sitting down. So hopefully by the end of this video, you're going to go from seated to a standing position and have a whole new outlook on the actual psoas itself. Now I've covered a bunch of different videos on psoas and hip flexor health uh, in the past. If you haven't seen those videos, there's one of two options or one of two reasons why. It's because you're not subscribed to our channel or you don't have the notification bell uh, clicked. You can do that right now. Click that little bell you see where I'm pointing to. That's going to make sure you get all the... Um, videos that we publish uh, almost daily now. Um, so this video is all about the psoas. Real quick, the psoas, or you might know it as the, the hip flexor. There's actually two parts of the hip flexor. You got your uh, your iliopsoas. So the psoas is one of the muscles within that, that hip flexor region. It's responsible for two things. Primarily, it's responsible for bringing the knee up to the chest or flexing the hip, but also laterally stabilizing the spine. So if this side is, you know, you're laterally dipping to one side, this side is going to be engaged just a little more, not a lot. It's not a prime mover, but it, it is a secondary uh, muscle used in that, in that movement. So let's talk about the importance of the hip flexion and all that it does. We walk, right? We step up, whatever, you know, we lunge down, all of this, all of these movements are directly linked to the psoas. Now, what you're saying, well, you might be saying, hey, what is the psoas? I've heard of this. I, I don't know exactly what it is or where it is or whatever. The psoas, what you need to know is the only muscle in the body that connects the upper body to the lower body. It's also responsible for uh, maintaining posture and maintaining good core control because if you're like one of the many luck, lucky people to sit behind a desk all day, that muscle gets shortened. And if it gets shortened too much, you're gonna get into some injuries, you're gonna get into some extreme tightness that might be uncomfortable and unbearable when you do stand. Um, so what you need to know about this is that it connects from the lower spine, runs over, through and over the hip bone and connects the upper part of the leg. You can't get to it just by palpating or pushing down. Um, by standing, yes, there are certain people like massage therapists, chiropractors, uh, physical therapists, doctors that might be able to get down deep into it. But think about it. Your psoas is connected to your spine. Your spine's not right here. It's deep within the center of your body, if not closer to your lower back. You can feel your spine there. So think, it connects to the front part of your leg, connects to that spine. So it pretty much goes from the back to the front of the body. So you might hear people say, or a trainer or your friend or a coach might say, hey, you just need to massage or um, release your psoas. Just get in there, dig down deep. Well, you're not going to get to it through your stomach. You've got your abs. You've got different layers of your abs. You've got your organs, your intestines, some fat deposits. You're not going to get to it just by pushing down. So if you have been told you got to stretch out or massage and release that psoas, it's better to go to where it inserts or the top part of your femur or your leg bone. That's a little more uh, superficial. It's more towards the uh, top of the surface. So that is a little easier to get to. Now you might not know which particular muscle or tendon that you're rubbing. It might be your quad. It might be, uh, it might just might be something else, but does really matter if you're pushing on the psoas or something else if it is sore because if I'm digging right here and I feel that but that might be my quad it doesn't again doesn't really matter because what I'm trying to do is release whatever is tight that's the whole point of massage or release so that's the basic information you need to know about the psoas and where it is and what it's responsible for now before we actually get into some stretches and exercises you need to know one thing anterior pelvic tilt now, if you suffer from anterior pelvic tilt, and there's a good chance you are, it's because you sit all day, your hips are in an anterior pelvic tilt position. You need to know about posterior pelvic tilt. That's the opposite of the anterior pelvic tilt. Let me break it down for you pretty simple. Picture a five gallon bucket full of water, 
level as can be, no water is dipping out, but it's right up to the top. If you're gonna tilt the bucket forward so water is flowing forward away from you, that is anterior pelvic tilt. Posterior would be just the opposite. The bucket's tilting towards you, water's coming out the backside. Think of your hips the same way. You've got your hips, this is your five gallon bucket. If your hips are tilted forward, you know, you kind of have a protruding rear end, uh, an arch in your lower back. Your stomach sticks out a little bit. And this is very common of, uh, amongst people who sit a lot. The water's gonna be forward. That's your anterior pelvic tilt position. That's not a, necessarily a good thing. What you wanna do, in order to effectively stretch the psoas, you gotta tuck your tailbone underneath you, tilt the bucket backwards, now you're in posterior pelvic tilt. This is the position you have to be in when you see me doing these three stretches followed by a couple of exercises. You always have to be in a posterior pelvic tilt position. Again, I can't stress that enough. I see a lot of people at the gym, uh, even on YouTube, just saying, hey, do this quick stretch, do this, you know, do this, but they neglect the positioning of the body, which is the most important thing for anything. Okay, so with that said, here are the three stretches that you need to use Again, within posterior pelvic tilt to hit that psoas. First one's gonna be on the bench. I'm gonna stretch out my right hip flexor here, tuck my tailbone in or back. Now I'm lowering my body to the floor using gravity to help stretch out that hip flexor. You can hold this 10, 15, 20 seconds, go to your level of comfort, but again, you wanna stretch this out. So that means you'll have to be a little bit uncomfortable as you go. So as you can see, anterior pelvic tilt here, Posterior pelvic tilt, I'm just simply tucking my tailbone back, squeezing my cheeks together, lowering down as low as I can. That is one exercise that you can use. Second exercise is similar, but you're gonna go to the floor. Okay, half kneel position. I'm in a neutral position here. That's anterior pelvic tilt. I feel absolutely nothing going on in my hips. Watch this. That's all the difference right there, is going from there to here. Brings a whole different level of discomfort within that hip. Of course, it's gonna radiate down to the quad because your quad inserts up here. Excuse me, originates up here. So I'm holding this stretch, pelvic tilt back. You might not see it, but I feel it. Do this a couple times and you'll, you'll feel the difference. Do the same thing on the other side, obviously. Now what you want to be mindful of is that one side most likely will be tighter than the other side. And that's usually environmental, pre-existing injury conditions or whatever. You want to make sure you stretch out both sides evenly. And if you do feel a little more tightness on one side, hit that side a little harder and hold it for a little longer. The third exercise is going to require a foam roller. You're going to be on your back. You're going to put the foam roller right underneath your butt. Ease down into a, a, a supine position. Hips are up. Now what I'm gonna do is slowly extend one leg out. Try to relax. Now if you're up for it, extend the other leg out. This is gonna be definitely a little more challenging, especially if you got known tightness within those hips or any type of lower back pain. If you do suffer from tight hips or lower back pain, go with one leg at a time. You can hold this. Now you can actually apply a little bit of palpation. You can feel where it's tight. Apply a little bit of massage in there. Not too much, just enough. You can kind of floss the muscle, go back and forth. You know, obviously the same thing on the other side. Pretty simple, right? Simple, but yet painful and effective. All right, dismount that however you, you can. Get rid of that foam roller for a second, we'll come back to it. All right, so those are three stretches that you can use to in, in, include into your stretch routine for that psoas. Now there are certain people out there that might need to strengthen their psoas. Um, not many people need to strengthen their psoas, it's more so people who are hypermobile within their hips like dancers, acrobats, gymnasts. Um, so they need to do a little more strengthening. Now also with that said, high level speed athletes like track, soccer, uh, jumpers, basketball, 
athletes, they need to increase hip flexion, speed, and strength in order to get more power pushed to the ground. It's very simple. So let's, let's talk about running mechanics real quick. The faster you run, the higher the knee needs to come up. So I'm gonna use this just for balance. The knee comes up. In order to increase stride frequency, that just means a faster turnover rate, you gotta be able to generate enough power to lift that knee up quick and back down to the ground. Not only do you need strong hips, but you need a strong glute as these are uh, opposing muscle groups. So in order to get strong hips, you have to apply some strong, or excuse me, some strength training principles. I've got two exercises for you if you're looking to increase hip flexor strength. Now again, I'm gonna proceed, have you proceed with caution is because if you do sit, like you saw me at the start of this video, if you, if you are in a seated position a lot of the day, do not strengthen your hip flexors. I cannot stress that enough. Do not strengthen your hip flexors if you sit a lot. Now, if you're an athlete looking, again, there's always conditions to be met, but for general population, strengthen your glutes. So I'm only gonna show you two exercises to strengthen the, your hips and only use them if you're a candidate for hip strengthening. All right, so the first exercise, it's gonna require you to have a mini band. It could be a light resistance, it could be a heavy resistance, but it needs to be a mini band. Wrap it around your feet, not your ankles, not your toes, right in the middle of your feet. I got my foam roller for balance, all I'm gonna do is drive up, drive up. I'm gonna go for a little more speed right here. I'll show you from the side. Drive up, drive up. I'm still in a posterior pelvic tilt. I got my glutes squeezed, that's anterior. Posterior, up. Now if you wanna go for more strength, slow it down. Hold it at the top, release at the bottom. Very simple, very effective. The second exercise, gonna require you to get on the floor. Let me make a little adjustment in here. Still using the mini band. You're gonna wrap it around some point on the ground, doesn't have to be a bench. It can be, I don't know, it could be anything that you can wrap it around. Flat on your back. Posterior pelvic tilt, pull the knee in. Release, pull in, release. Now you wanna make sure that lower back is pushed to the floor. That's gonna brace your core and stabilize. Pull in, release, pull in, release. Obviously you're gonna do the other side. But now if you want a little more resistance, all you need to do is change the band or scoot back. That's all you need to do. Um, so I showed you three good stretches, two strengthening exercises. And now um, if you wanna talk about like actually releasing it, you're just like, I don't need to stretch it. I don't need to strengthen it. I just need it to be released. That's when best bet is to go see a massage therapist or a physical therapist and have them actually get in there and dig that. Now let's say you don't wanna do that, which is fine. I totally get it. Um, but what you can do on your own is use three tools uh, that are pretty readily accessible in most gyms or uh, facilities. You're gonna use something like this. It doesn't have to be this. It could be a broomstick. You're gonna, it just needs to be, has a, a, a tip on the end. You're gonna dig down deep. Very simple. Again, this is for more pain treatment. And if you're like, oh, my hips are just nagging me. I can't release my hips. That's one option. Second and third option are kind of similar. Grab a kettlebell, apply some resistance. This will get down deep. If you want to tolerate it, try to put it on your midsection there, about two inches from your belly button and also down. So almost at the top of that hip bone. Now see, I, I can't feel my psoas here. I just feel my stomach, my abs, but also my internal organs. Not necessarily a good feeling. So I would just stick closer to the crease in your hips. Roll it side to side, like that feels really good. You don't have a kettlebell, but you've got a 25 pound plate. Grab the plate. Same thing. Push down. You can even extend it to intensify it. 
The reason why you have your legs shortened is because that muscle balls up, it contracts, even though it's a relaxed state, and you're able to get it a little better. So that's it. That's your so as everything you need to know about it. You've got some massage techniques, you've got some basic one-on-one, you've got some stretches, and you've got some strengthening exercises. Don't abuse your psoas, treat it with respect, take care of it, and you're gonna see, once you start focusing on your hips, everything is gonna be affected. Upper body, lower body, and also on the inside. So hopefully, um, you can apply these principles into your training and see some great success. So hopefully you found this SOAS video helpful. There's gonna be something else you're gonna find just as helpful. It's a report that I wrote, it's called Why Stretching Won't Make You Flexible. It's free, it's for you, and it's right here. Click this box and give us your email and the report is on its way to you. Not only that, make sure you subscribe to this channel and check out this awesome video that I know you're gonna love. In addition to that, comment on this video, like it, share it with somebody you know, interact with us, give us a suggestion for an upcoming video. Also check out our video description area below. I'm Coach Brian with CriticalBench.com. Thanks for watching.